With just a little bit of know-how and a whole lot of spirit, it really is incredible what people can accomplish. Today we've traveled to Byron Bay to visit one DIY tiny house project that I think is really going to impress. G'day Ben, how's it going? Good, Bryce, how are you? Good, thank you mate. Hi Nat, lovely to meet Hi, you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Guys, this house is absolutely striking. <laughs> thank you very much. The timing for our visit worked out absolutely brilliantly because you are only just finishing up the build of your home now, aren't you? We are, yeah. Literally putting together the sort of final pieces of the puzzle at the moment. Uh, we spent nearly a decade in the soup yacht industry, living on boats, living in spaces this big with like five or six crew. So this is relatively luxurious compared to that. Yeah, so we've been home in Australia for a few years now and this is sort of part of our journey of moving back into the country. I love the style, it's very unusual. Can you talk to me a little bit about the design here? Yeah, sure. So we've got the recycled windows on the outside with the corrugated iron and the Western Red Cedar cladding, sort of combination of all the three and, and the white windows. We thought this styling sort of suited really nicely. And uh, yeah, so the corrugated iron cladding was a sort of few different reasons. One of them was the colour. We liked the colour and the aesthetic of the corrugation. And also the extra bracing that it applied to the side of the building as well. We've only used 70 mil stud framing, so the extra bracing was actually really effective for the house. And one of the really unique features about this house as well is this really interesting wedge that you've got in the top there. Can you talk to me about how that works? Yeah, sure. That was a labour of love. The whole idea of that is to give us standing headroom in our loft, which we sort of considered quite important for our, our long-term livability in the house. Yeah, so it's road legal height with the roof level, and then it pops up for once the house is in position. Now the wedge looks like quite a complicated thing to put in. Can you talk to me about how this was built and how it's installed? It's relatively simple in terms of what it is. It's not really easy to put in. It's a bit heavy, it's a bit cumbersome. We can do it with two, but three people is much easier. So the first thing we do is we lift the roof up. The big windows go up first and they sit up on the roof. And then the two wedges go in one at a time, one on each side. And then we stand up the front two windows and put it against the two wedges. Uh, we then put the roof down and put the screws in that hold it all together and screw it down to the frame and, and up to the roof as well. And then we've got a series of cover plates that go over the top of the screw holes on the inside to sort of make it look a bit pretty on the inside. Now this whole build was done as a DIY project, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a real labour of love, the whole thing. It's been probably six months of intense building. We're unemployed at the moment, so yeah, this is pretty much all we've done for, for six months help. is just focus on this with, yeah, with Family quite a bit help. of help. My dad has to be credited with a huge amount of work in this project and my brother as well has been down quite a lot to help us out. But yeah, no, it's been a great project and it's been awesome to do it ourselves. And I think the fact that we know so much about it now is really beneficial for us. So the things that we enjoyed, I guess, were the creativity that this project allowed us to have. We sort of had a bunch of ideas in mind and it was really fun to be able to sort of make them become reality. We had a vision at the start and what we've ended up with is quite similar to that vision. So there's a lot of sort of satisfaction in, in that. I really enjoyed being able to show our daughter too that girls can use tools as well. And she got to see me using the drop saw and she got to be a part of the building process and she was hammering away and we gave her screws and she had her own toolkit. And so that was really, really cool, really empowering for her. So what are the dimensions of this home? The trailer itself is 7.8 metres on the deck, 2.5 wide, and it's 4.3 high when the roof is folded down. And the spot that you're parked up on here is absolutely idyllic. What's the story of this place? Yeah, so we're very fortunate. Uh, this is family land, it's mum and dad's property. So uh, we're very lucky to have this little spot to call home the tiny house. This actually isn't its final resting place. It's gonna move a little bit in the not too distant future. But uh, yeah, being in here surrounded by the trees and, and in the environment here, we're, we're very fortunate. How much land do you have here? Uh, it's about 260 acres in total. Wow. And for your parents, being able to have you here to help manage that must be an essential part of the equation for them. It most definitely is. They get just as much out of it as we do. We're really excited about that opportunity as well to help them look after it. We've got sort of lots of plans to do a lot of bush regeneration and whatnot here. So yeah, it's a great opportunity for them and, and for us. So yeah, it works beautifully. 
Well, you've both done such a phenomenal job on the exterior of the house. I cannot wait to see how you've kitted out on the inside. Can we check it out? Yeah, sure. let's go. Come in. Thank you. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. What a fantastic job you've done in here. Oh, thank you very much. I really love the style. Can you talk to me about the design in here? Yeah, well, we work together a lot on that. There are a lot of discussions over how we should go about it, but we both love natural timbers and we wanted it to be as low impact build as we could, reasonably make it. We used natural paints and we used natural timbers that we sourced locally and flooring, that was a hard find. And did a lot of research to find the Baltic pine flooring and have it brought up from Melbourne. It's, it's so lightweight and so we wanted it to be clean and white and open so that it would feel as big as possible yet still warm with the timber and lots of places for me to put my plants. <laughs> I do love all of the plants in here that looks really nice it's amazing how quickly plants can just make a space feel so homey. Mm, mm. Definitely I really enjoy having plants in the space as well so that was a factor in our design and we always knew where we were going to place them and had them growing ahead of time, ready for their new home. We also really wanted the house to engage with the outside as much as uh, it does on the inside as well. So the house is like a place that we live, but half the idea of the tiny house is that we actually spend a lot more time outside the house as well. So engagement with the environment was really important to us and the placement of the windows sort of where they're positioned helps you engage with the outside when you're hanging out inside the house. Throughout the house you really can see the beautiful timbers that you've used in here. Even the shelf is just a really striking timber. What is this wood? Uh, yeah, so it's camp laurel, uh, which is actually a naturalised weed in the Northern Rivers area. And it just happens to be beautiful timber when it's oiled up and looking nice. So we're really, really happy with it. The shelf is also a structural element of the house. It's batten screwed through the studs into the back of the shelf. So it's a stiff enough for this wall at the same time. And now tell me about the design of the kitchen. Uh, well, we really wanted it to be clean again and open. And we know that spaces like this can get cluttered really quickly. So uh, lots of storage. Uh, and we also wanted it to flow out onto our one day deck so that people can be out there and we can be cooking and it can be all one space. Yeah, so we were also inspired by other tiny houses uh, that we've seen of late and this was just the design that we really loved, that we felt comfortable with. Great that you've managed to put the fridge into the stair space as well. Uh, yeah, so full-size fridge was uh, something we really wanted and yeah, it just made sense to put it under the stairs and so we built all the stairs ourselves kind of around our existing fridge. It fits there really well and it's actually a really good spot for it. And then down here we have your lounge area. Uh, yeah, so it's built into the house. It's obviously designed to be a lounge and be comfortable, but it's also covering the wheel well, so it's still exposed on that side, you can see. But because we have the lower trailer, we have a wheel well, so it was important to us to build this in so that it did cover that. We couldn't put an actual piece of furniture in here because the wheel well's in the way. So it worked really well to build it in. Matt made cushions for it and everything. It's good. It's a comfy lounge. <laughs> Fantastic. And then you've built storage into these as well, I'm guessing? Yeah, yep. Uh, so underneath, we just lift them up. They're just hinged tops. And uh, there's also our uh, HDMI cable so we're gonna put a DVD player in there and it's then linked up to this little hatch on the wall here which is gonna have a little projector in it which is gonna shine onto it or view onto a screen just behind you on the window there. That is a so, very clever idea I love the way that you've built that in. We wanted to still be able to watch movies and whatnot obviously but yeah we didn't want to have a TV that was potentially always on in the house so yeah we sort of thought that was a nice way of being able to watch movies and not have a TV and not taking up extra wall space for a TV, which we don't really have any spare wall space anyway. Windows are better. <laughs> Absolutely, I completely agree. And you've built an extra storage space into your stairs as well. Uh, yes, we do. So somewhere to put our shoes potentially. And we've got the family drawers here. So the dog gets bottom one, uh, Charlie gets a little toy one and mum and dad get the, the higher ones. A few others and we also put this one in here as a bit of a pantry. Either pantry or maybe some gin. <laughs> that is a really good idea. I love the way that that's been done. And then I see some stairs there behind the couch. Where does that lead? Uh, this goes up to our daughter's loft. You can take a look. Yes, please. This is adorable. What a cute little space. 
So how old is Charlie? She's two and a half. So she's very excited that she can touch the roof in her loft. And uh, yeah, she's got her very own room that she's helped decorate and chosen the colors and her very first big girl bed. So it's a big deal. So yeah, we've added a little desk for her because she loves drawing and uh, we wanted it to be a really nice space for her to hang out. So she's got her little cushion and uh, she's already been sitting up here drawing away. So she loves it. That is a very sweet addition. I like how you've done that. And then can you talk to me about the plans that you've got for this room? Because you're doing some things to safety proof it for a toddler, aren't you? We are, yeah, we're really worried about it. So we've got a stair kind of ladder and it lands on the couch. So if anything is to happen, she'll land on a soft surface. Uh, there's plans too to put shutters. They're on order so that she won't fall out and she can open them. Uh, and we're going to put rigid fly screens or something on the windows to stop her hanging out. <laughs> so some security mesh or something like that. So yeah, she's supervised at the moment at all times and she hasn't actually slept up here yet. But uh, once still safe, she gets to. <laughs> and then underneath here, you've got your bathroom, don't you? Yep, sure do. Yeah, so uh, this is our bathroom. Oh, I love what you've done here with this waterfall vanity. That's such a nice touch. Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, that's actually the offcut from the camphor shelf that's out in the lounge room out there. Beautiful. It's quite an interesting design what you've done here with the composting toilet. Can you tell me about that? So the toilet bit's fairly standard, uh, but it's also got this step uh, which we built specifically for our daughter, for Charlie, to be able to step up. Uh, she can step on here and then stand up on here and, and access the sink up there and wash her own hands and that sort of stuff and clean her teeth. That is such a good idea. I love how all throughout this house you've just really thought about your daughter and her ability to use and enjoy the space as well. Yeah, well that's really important to us and it makes it a lot easier for us as well for her to be able to access everything. It's practical, but it's also a convenience thing for us that we don't have to supervise as much. We can tell her to go and wash her hands and she can do it without too much input from us. And then you've installed a shub as well, which I think is a great idea, especially with a toddler. You've got to have a place for baths, right? Yeah, most definitely. Um, and Charlie loves her baths. I think Matt actually mainly wanted a bath. When we first started talking about tiny houses, she right from day one was like, how can I fit a bath into the bathroom? <laughs> And that can sit in it and have a bath and whatnot. So yeah, it sort of serves a few purposes. <laughs> Fantastic. It does look like your knees would be around your neck if you were sitting in that though. <laughs> I don't care. I'll make it work. It's worth it anyway. Yeah. Fair enough. And it looks like you've got plans to add something in here as well? Uh, yeah, so this is where the washing machine is going to go. So we've got the taps in there ready to, ready to go. So yeah, it was important to us that we had a washing machine inside as well for convenience sake. And then uh, we've got your sleeping loft up here as well. Yeah, let's go and check it out. Yes, please. This is really cool. Having this wedge, it's amazing how much space it's added to the loft, isn't it? Yeah, being able to stand up here really was the whole reason we did this basically, was to be able to stand here at the foot of the bed. We can get dressed here really easily. We can do whatever we, yeah, whatever we need to do here and have heaps of head height. So it's very convenient. It's worth all the trouble of what it takes to put these things up here for sure. The placement of these windows is great as well because not only do you get a great view from up here, it's also doing a lot to create some breeze through the home, isn't it? Yeah, ventilation was yeah a big part of these for sure. So it does create, you can feel at the moment, there's a lot of breeze flowing through the house. So being at the, at the highest point definitely helps to vent air out of the house for sure, yeah. Now we've visited your home right nearing the end of this part of the build, but you're nowhere near complete at this point, are you? You've got big plans. Can you tell me what's next for your home? Yeah, so we're gonna relocate it a little bit just behind us over there. We're gonna put in a new driveway first. Then we've got a whole off-grid setup that's gonna be part of the project as well. So we've got a whole big solar system. We've got an evacuated tube, hot water system. It's all gotta be set up beside the house. Uh, once it's in position. So yeah, that's coming very, very soon. And for us, it's probably one of the most exciting parts of the whole project was not only to build the house, but to then use renewable energy and be completely disconnected from the grid. So as DIYers, what has the process of building your own home been like for you? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been awesome. It's been a real journey. Probably not a long journey in comparison to some maybe because we've had the luxury of being able to do it full time. But uh, yeah, it's been a journey. We've got a toddler running around at the same time. 
which always makes things interesting. And to be able to now live in a house that we have built with our own hands is yeah, hugely rewarding for us. You have got here at a time when we're literally just moving our stuff into the house and this is like the real beginning of us living in this house. It's actually the first time that we've really sat back and sort of taken a moment to look at what we've done over the last six months and seen it as a bigger picture. So the satisfaction levels are pretty high at the moment. We're feeling like we've really achieved something pretty awesome. Yeah, it's suddenly just bam, come together. We just imagined how it would all go together and fit and we're looking at it. This home has been beautifully done. You've obviously fit a lot of very high quality elements in here. Do you know at this point what the cost of the build is? I haven't added up the last couple of weeks because it's been quite busy. There's about 20 grand's worth of solar set up and hot water system set up and whatnot. So the house itself was about 45-ish and then yeah, 65 total overall for the whole lot. This is a really great result for that budget. You've both done a really wonderful job. Thank you both so much for sharing your great project with me. Thanks. Thank you for filming. Ben and Nat have done such a great job with this home. As first time DIYers, it really is so impressive what they've accomplished here. And best of all, this project is just getting started. I cannot wait to see what happens and how this home transforms once all of the solar and off-grid technology is added to it. And hopefully one day we'll be back to check in and see how it's all going.